Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com and we are talking about Tantra and Tantric sex and the topic for this video is uh, Tantra is different than polyamory. You can be polyamorous and non-tantrica and you can be a tantrica and be non-polyamorous. Those are two different things and sometimes they overlap. Okay, In the people right now on this planet who are practicing some I would say sexually free lifestyles. It means that they don't necessarily fit in the traditional models. You have, yes, you have the tantricas, then you have the polyamory community, then you have uh, the, the tribe which is into kinky and BDSM practices, and then you have the tribe which is more like the swingers. And so all these different tribes, very often they overlap a little bit. But what's important to understand, it is that uh, the practices or what you might encounter in a tantra workshop will be very, very different than what you might encounter in a kinky or BDSM workshop. It's totally different, different things. And uh, some people feel extremely attuned with one specific lineage and uh, not attuned at all with any other of these, these practices. You know, you might be a tantrika and really be committed to be in a state of harmony with your wife that you married 20 years ago and um, not have any desire or urge to go and experience uh, sexuality or sensuality with anybody else. So keep that in mind. I want to say a few words about the idea of polyamory and monoamory. Rather than using polyamory and monogamous or monogamy, I use the term polyamory and monoamory. Polyamory means that you love more than one person. And sometimes that happens within a period of a month a few weeks, sometimes it happens in the same night, sometimes it happens for a while and then uh, disappears. And uh, so there is a little bit of a distinction rather than saying you are or you are not, I would say that you are maybe at 80% or you are at 20%. You know, how polyamorous are you? You are 100% polyamorous. It means that you are uh, extremely open to uh, sharing sensuality and sex with lots of partners, different partners, and uh, that happens frequently. So uh, some other people might have a one-time experience once in a lifetime. So they are maybe polyamorous at 5%, okay? So this distinction, I, I like the idea of quantifying how polyamorous you are rather than just using the label, this is what you are, you know, how fit are you? Well, I'm fit at uh, 80%. My level of performance is relatively high. So when you start quantifying it, it just puts it into perspective rather than being a label. Some people are active in the field of polyamory, but they might be little active a tiny little bit. They might have just a couple of experience here and there, and some other people are full on in the field of polyamory. So um, if, you, if you shared intimacy with more than one person, you know, in a period of a month, most of the times that starts already qualifying you to be at least a little polyamorous. It means that you find it relatively easy to connect with different people. And um, uh, there is a little bit of a stigma around that world because um, those who want to be in a situation of uh, monoamory and be committed to one partner very often still have impulses or desires to explore uh, sex beyond the limits of their committed relationship. And so that creates a kind of inner challenge where a part of you wants to explore other people, other sexual energies, while at the same time there is this um, inner compass or guideline or inner uh, value that says that doing that is a bad thing, that it's unethical. And uh, yeah, this is one of the major, I would say, challenges that you might face when you engage into the polyamory world. There is still lots of shame and lots of guilt around sex. And for somebody to just go and, and uh, have sex with somebody outside of their relationship and then come back to their partner and be really proud about what they did, you know, it's... Uh, it's not something that happens frequently. Most of the times people will try to hide it, you know, keep it in the closet, not expose themselves with um, uh, having multiple lovers because 
they are ashamed or uh, society condemns that. So it's good to keep those distinctions a little bit in mind and be aware of these uh, dynamics so that we know better how to navigate uh, these landscapes. So again, to come back to the topic of this video, I got a little bit sidetracked in the field of polyamory right now, but the, that Tantra is uh, different than polyamory. They can overlap sometimes. And um, when I say Tantra, I should say Tantric sex rather than Tantra. You see, I make the, myself the, the, the mistake there. Uh, tantric sex is different than polyamory. Um, some people will poly be polyamorous and you engage with them and there is nothing tantric about what they are doing. It means that there is no uh, sacred dimension. There is no nothing that that holds the energy of uh, tantric, um, you know, the tantric vibration in there. So, uh, where I, and uh, other people might engage into tantric sex and be extremely exclusive and dedicated to, to their partner. So, yeah, keep that in mind. This is it for now with these distinctions. I hope you enjoy this uh, new set of, um, of videos and I'm about to go snorkeling in the beautiful waters of uh, of Bali, such a beautiful landscape here, peaceful. The ideal place to bring peace into these concepts and ideas. And um, Mount Tagung, the highest volcano over here, which was to 3,700 meters, is right there behind us. And uh, guess what? It's a symbol, symbol for the Shiva Lingam, which is a symbol of fertility, of course. So much more to say. I see you soon again. Take care.